everybody this is dream and today we have a pretty big 11 game slate here um before we get into the report can you guys smash that like and subscribe button it really helps the channel I really do appreciate it uh so we got most of the teams they haven't played yesterday thankfully so that's gonna be a little bit of an advantage for a change but the injury report is very long so let's go ahead and get into that real quick and then we'll get into draft kings and then FanDuel after that so we'll start off with the injury report here uh, so we're going to start with the uh, Washington Wizards. Hakamura is out and Wright is out. For the Hornets, Ball, Hayward, and Smith Jr. are out. For the Nuggets, Porter Jr. is out and Jeff Green is doubtful. For the Hawks, Capella is questionable. Bogdanovich might end up playing for his first game. He's questionable. Collins and Hunter are both out. That's going to open up some opportunity. Uh, for the Heat, uh, Deadman, Jovic, and... Uh, are both questionable, and everybody else is basically probable, with the exception of Oladipo, who's out. For the Magic, Bamba is questionable, Carter Jr. is out, Suggs is out, Harris is out, Nokiki's out. For the Cavs, Allen is out, Love is doubtful. For the Lakers, LeBron and Davis are probable. Uh, Walker Jr. is question Walker, the second, fourth, excuse me, is questionable, and Schroeder is questionable. For the Bucks, Middleton is probable. For the Raptors, Atua and Porter are out. For the Nets, Simmons is out. For the 76ers, Harris is questionable. Harden and Maxi are out. For the Grizzlies, Bain is out. For the Pelicans, Ingram, Jones are both out. And then McCollum is probable. For the Spurs, Podol is out. Richardson is doubtful. Sokin is out. Bassey is out. And McDermott is doubtful. For the Pacers, Halliburton is questionable. And Dorote is out. For the Jazz, Conley is out. For the Rockets, Tate is out. For the Suns, Chris Paul is out, and Cam Johnson's out, and for the Bulls, Caruso is probable. So we have several teams that have a lot of questionable options, which are going to potentially make changes throughout the day. So we do have to keep an eye on that information. If you do want to, come and check out our Discord here. Uh, we have injury news here that we come every day. I actually put the uh, list of injury report here as well, and then I have some Twitter accounts that automatically tweet or put that in our Discord. So come check that out. Uh, link should be in the description below. Uh, so let's get into the players I do like today. We're going to start with Joe Harris uh, for um, the Brooklyn Nets. He's got some upside today with uh, Simmons out. His price came back down quite a bit when Simmons started playing, and uh, it's really made him viable. He's not typically somebody I like to use, but when he's playing 35-plus minutes, uh, he has some upside, though he is kind of scoring dependent. You could also put uh, 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 Curry for Brooklyn in the same boat. He's kind of got more upside, but he's also scoring dependent. Uh, then we'll look at Jordan Clarkson here for Utah. He's in a pretty good matchup here, especially if uh, Hal Halliburton ends up out. Uh, he's been playing a lot more minutes, and his uh, usage has gone up since uh, Conley's out. Him and Sexton both play more minutes as a result, and their usages have risen. And this is a game where it should they should be able to do pretty well. Uh, Trey Jones uh, for the Spurs. He seems like his price is a little bit too cheap for his potential here. Uh, with a lot of guys out, his usage is going to go up, and his minutes will probably uh, hike up a little bit more. Uh, but he's been pretty solid around this price point most of the season. He's had a little bit of ups and downs, but overall, I really do like him on the slate. Uh, then we'll look at Colin Sexton here, who I did mention for a second. He's just been playing extremely well with Conley out, and his minutes have risen, obviously, as a result. And his... Uh, you know, fantasy points per game are rising. Yeah, his price is up, but he's still a good value. It's a little bit too cheap for what he's been doing lately. Uh, then Zach Levine for Chicago. He seems like he's in a pretty good spot here. He's probably one of my safer plays on the slate. Even though it's a kind of a tough matchup, it should be a higher scoring game. And he tends to do well in those types of games. And as you can see, he's been pretty solid lately. He does have tendency to have off games, but overall I think this is a game where he should do pretty well in. Uh, then we'll look at Evan Mobley. Now, Evan Mobley has a nice matchup here, especially with a lot of guys out for Orlando. And he's been playing really well with Love and uh, and uh, Allen out. And his price point is still pretty fair. It's actually a little bit down from what it peaked out up uh, a couple games ago. Uh, so he has a nice upside here. Uh, hopefully they don't blow them out because uh, that kind of hurt his minutes the last game. But he's got double-double potential here. And should be able to 5x relatively easily. Uh, then we'll look at... I'm also going to point out that he's one of the guys I think is a, a good play. Uh, Keldon Johnson's also a guy I like a lot. His price point is too cheap for what he's been doing lately. He's finally kind of gotten out of the injury issues he was in. Seems like he's pretty healthy now. And he's now getting back to his normal stacking. Uh, doing a lot to the stat sheet and stuff. 
And with some of the injuries to the Pelicans, he should have some good opportunity here, especially the fact there's a lot of injuries on the Spurs as well. So there, he's going to have all the minutes he can handle as, as long as he stays healthy. And so he's another one of my core plays on the slate as well. Uh, then we'll look at P.J. Washington. Now, P.J. Washington is very inconsistent. Uh, unfortunately, he has big games and then crappy games a lot. And so uh, obviously, we want to find him on the big games. But this is a good matchup here for against Washington. Now, he's had a good game and a bad game against them this season so far. So do keep that in mind. But he is somebody to consider on the slate. On the slate. Um, Malik Beasley is another guy I like uh, for Utah. He's been playing really well. Uh, his minutes have mostly been solid, especially with Conley out, but uh, he's been a little bit inconsistent in the minutes, as you can see. He's had some 30-plus minutes and then some in the low 20s early, or high teens even. Uh, obviously, we need him to get over the tw you know 25 or so minutes in this matchup to pay off here, but I think he's got the capacity to do it. And with, some, with Conley still out, he still should get more shot attempts and stuff like that. Uh, then we're going to look at Jared Vanderbilt. He's another guy that's been pretty inconsistent, uh, but he's got a good matchup here, and Indiana has been giving up the most points in the league so far this season, so I do like some guys on Utah as a result, and he's just another guy that's been playing pretty well. Uh, when he gets the more minutes, he definitely pays off more, and his price has come down some, so he's definitely viable on the slate. Uh, Zach Collins is another guy I like. Okay, I don't love him here because his minutes are kind of capped around 25 or so, regardless of the injury situations. And so that does cap him a little bit, but he does have 30, 35 fantasy point upside if he gets if he can get to a double-double, which is definitely doable. The last game he did get uh, foul trouble, which did hurt him, but overall he's still a viable play, but I don't think he's a must-play based on his price coming up. Uh, then we'll look at Kelly Olenek for Utah Jazz. Uh, he's been extremely good lately and pretty consistent as well. Uh, his price point has come up a little bit, but he's still in a pretty good spot, and he's been pretty solid all season. Uh, though he does have tendency to have bad games, I still think he's a viable option on a slate. And then Miles Plumlee, uh, he's in an interesting spot here because he's been extremely good against Washington this season so far. He's had two pretty solid games against them. Uh, not like, you know, back-breaking games where you're just, you know, 55 fantasy points or something, but... You know, good, solid 30 fantasy point, uh, 26 and 30 fantasy point games. And he's the type of guy that, you know, he's pretty safe on this particular slate. Uh, though his minutes, you know, he is a little bit tied against uh, against Nick Richards on as his backup. But he's been doing pretty solid and he's pretty safe. So I think he's somebody you have to take in consideration. So that's what I have for DraftKings. Uh, I really just have two core plays, which are Kevin, Kel Kelton Johnson and Mobley. I do think the injuries are going to open up some other options, though, especially in core play situations, uh, especially when we get better idea about who exactly is going to play for Atlanta and also for Miami. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to see. But uh, let's go and get into FanDuel here. Uh, so we're going to start off with Jordan Clarkson uh, for Utah. Another, uh, Obviously, the Jazz have a nice matchup here against... Uh, against um, Indiana, and Indiana has been giving up more points than anybody, and with Conley out, uh, Clarkson and Sexton both have lots of upside here. Uh, then we'll look at Trey Jones uh, for San Antonio. His price is a little bit more expensive here on FanDuel than he is on DraftKings, but he's still viable on the slate. He's been pretty good most of the season. Uh, he's not really a must-play because of his price, but he's still a, somebody to consider on this particular slate. And then Cameron Payne, uh, his price point seems pretty solid. He's been very inconsistent last five or six games, so that is a little bit of a concern, but his price has come back down a little bit, and Chris Ball is still out, so his minutes should be up in this particular matchup. Colin uh, Sexton, he's a guy I really like on the slate at 5100 bucks. He's one of my must plays, or at least one of my core plays so far on FanDuel. Um, he's been pretty solid for uh, Utah with uh, Conley out, and his price point really hasn't completely reflected his usage and up, out, output uh, since that's occurred. And so we got to keep running him while he's available and cheap. Uh, Vassal uh, for San Antonio Spurs. Uh, he has nice upside and uh, in this plus matchup. He should get some a good amount of run. Not only that, but there's a lot of injuries here. So his minutes are pretty locked in in the mid to upper 30s, hopefully. And so he definitely has good upside on this uh, slate. Uh, then we'll look at Beasley uh, for the Jazz. Uh, he's just a little bit too cheap for what he can do. Uh, the question is, is if he can if he can retain the you know 25 plus minute situation. He's been a little bit all over the place minutes wise. Even with Conley out, um, he's still playing inconsistent minutes. 
So it does makes him not a must play, but it does make him somebody you have to consider uh, because he does have big upside when he plays those minutes. Then we'll look at Keldon Johnson. He's another guy I really like here for Seth Spurs. Uh, he's got nice upside in this matchup, and his price point is too cheap for what his potential is. Uh, he's been pretty good the last couple games now that he's back from injury and stuff like that, and I expect him to get back to his normal form. And at this price point, he's somebody that's viable. Uh, then uh, Trey Murphy, he's a little cheaper than what I expected him to be today here on FanDuel, uh, but he does have some inconsistent issues. And not only that, but we if McCollum is back, that would definitely hurt him some. But he's still somebody to take a look at. And obviously, McCollum news could affect that as well. Uh, then we'll look at Kyle K Kuzma, who's been really solid lately. Uh, he's only had a couple off games. He's been playing maximum amount of minutes, and he should be good to go in this matchup. And his price is pretty good here on FanDuel, especially against Charlotte. Then we'll look at Kelly Olenek, who's been uh, pretty solid for Utah. And uh, this is a nice plus matchup for him, and he's just a little bit too cheap for his potential and production as of late. And so I do think he's a really good play here on FanDuel. Uh, then we'll look at uh, Steven Adams uh, for Memphis. Now he's in an interesting spot because he's been pretty solid lately. But he does tendency, have tendency to have a low minute game here and there. But I don't think this is the situation where he'd have that. Uh, and centers have actually been doing decent the last few games against Philadelphia with all their injuries. Uh, then we'll look at Clint Capella. Uh, now, he is questionable for this game, and so you do have to make uh, to check out on that. But he's a little bit too cheap if he does play, especially with Collins and other guys out. Now, if he doesn't end up playing, then Okinawa would become viable on the slate. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Uh, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the description, and have a nice day, guys.